When David and Guillaume got back in touch about making Detroit, I wasn't terribly surprised they decided to make it because the fan response was so intense. So it makes sense that they would choose to do that after, after the enthusiasm. It was a challenge and it was just a, an interesting thing to get my head around um, how to approach this character now as a different, much older person and whether or not she had changed. And I'm very happy to say that with Detroit, I've had the opportunity to, to see Kara grow so much more than I ever expected. You do the housework, the washing, you cook the meals, and you take care of... God damn it, where the fuck's the rat gone now? Alice! Alice! I mean, she starts out essentially how she does in Kara in, in a very, uh, not robotic, but you know, android other way. And getting to take this journey where she becomes more and more human as it goes on. You know, and as an actor, that's a, that's a wonderful exploration in every way, whether it's how she sits, her posture, how her voice changes, how emotions change, and how much emotion is based on things like empathy and social experience. And so having, you know, as much material as I got with David to have this huge nuanced arc was really incredible. Why couldn't we just be happy? <laughs> this experience has been quite different than the experiences I've had shooting film or TV or, or doing theater work. I have 83 dots on my face and you know, really, really flattering black wetsuit type thing. And you're jumping around with props and it, it's, it's kind of like being a 10 year old imaginative kid. Uh, which is fun. There's 80 cameras around us. It's already lit. So we just shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot. There's no change of sets. There's no hair and makeup. There's no wardrobe. So we move really fast. And we'll go through about 35 pages in a day. Working in TV or film, we'll probably do six pages a day. It's kind of acting boot camp. It's like working out constantly. I mean, you're, you're doing this thing and then you got to do something that's completely other back to back to back. And so that kind of process of working is very challenging, but it's also very exciting because you just have to keep coming up with new ideas. And your head goes all over the place because you're trying to keep track of basically four different storylines for each different response. You shot that girl for fuck's sake. It was a machine that looked like a girl. Yeah, I, I know what I should have done. I just told you I couldn't. All right, I'm sorry. The fact that David Cade, he's telling like many stories interwoven from beginning to end is super complicated and super impressive. And I have no idea how he keeps it all in his head. He's not just the writer or the director who's seeing this from the outside eye. He's also thinking about the player walking through this space. You know, only somebody who really, really loves not the work, but like these characters and these stories and cares about doing something meaningful would invest that much in it. And it's always inspiring to work with somebody who cares that much. My experience with motion capture is this one. And, and I found it sort of terrifying in a way because they said the computer's gonna build you. But then as we got into it, I realized all the elements of it were still artistic. I just dipped into a, a really brilliant setup here. I've never seen anything like it. And this won't turn me into a product because I was playing a character. So, it's wonderful. In the game, Detroit comes back because of a revolutionary industrial rebirth. And there's no reason why that can't happen in Detroit, because they have such tremendous infrastructure for millions and millions of people who can very easily support, you know, a new industry. The city is really strong and resilient, but the city has also been through so much. You see the damage but it takes that time of kind of, of rebuilding and reinvesting into the city that I think is happening slowly but surely. The potential of Detroit as a city is something that this game does a lot of justice to because it would be easy to look at Detroit as some place that used to be and that's not the case. This game provokes a lot of conversation and reflection on our potential near future engagement with machines. That's what we are to them. Just merchandise on display in a shop window. I think that a group that feels marginalized, feels like they deserve and have earned access to themselves and the environment around them, and are trying to figure out a way to articulate how to get freedom. What was I designed to be? Their slave? Their toy? It plays with your comfort levels. You think that this is fine, you're comfortable with it, until something blurs the line and throws you off, and now 
people I feel differently about whether this should be allowed, should it be banned, should it be encouraged. You're gonna ruin our lives and for what? For a bunch of machines? They are not machines! They are alive! I'm alive! You're alive! They... they're nothing! There are lots of comparable comparisons to any type of persecution of religion, uh, race, etc., dating way back. It can't just be a video game where you shoot them up or where people make these choices to do whatever. I think that's the whole point. You have the choice, and you can either choose to go in one direction with your character or another. And I think that's going to be very telling about the gamer. Very telling. I think there's going to be a really strong reaction to, to this game, which has such a strong perspective. I'm that much more proud of it now to get to be a part of it because it's, it's important. And this 